Hey there folks, Zane from the Infinite Jukebox, aka the number one Sun Ra fan, here with another quick album review, and today I wanted to talk about the new Dave Harrington, Max Jaffe, and Patrick Shiroishi record, Speak Moment. Dave Harrington, guitarist, Max Jaffe, percussionist, and Patrick Shiroishi, saxophonist, are all unique performers and some of the most notable individuals behind their respective instruments in their respective realms of jazz-influenced noise and general sound art-based music. And it kind of makes sense that once they collided in real life, they would eventually form a trio. And it somehow even makes more sense that that naturally became a very improv-based trio trio and now here we are. I mean they naturally collided, they jammed, it led to an improvisational studio album. That studio album is here, it's called Speak Moment and it's pretty alright. It's not bad. I think that Speak Moment is a solid record that does a nice job highlighting some of their technical abilities but at the same time fails to really show off some of their better and most impassioned moments which can be found on various other records that each of them have been a part of over time. I would argue that the primary standout performer here is none other than guitarist Dave Harrington, which is kind of interesting considering he is the individual in this trio that's least likely to be described as jazz. Whether you want to say that he's done ambient work, post-rock work, etc, etc, he does have his jazzier moments, but as a whole he's a bit more idiosyncratic than the other two-thirds of this project, but as a whole I actually think that he is the instrumentalist here that demonstrates the most personality. I mean, it's his focus on atmosphere and the creation of really moving soundscapes that I would say puts him closer to the ballpark of jazz than a lot of people would give him credit for in his solo work, in his various other projects, and I think that's true here, as those qualities about his performance work are completely in effect, and interestingly enough, provide some of the most grand climactic moments throughout the entirety of the record, even in the midpoint and first half of the album. The roughly 12 minute track How to Draw Buildings in particular manages to especially accentuate just how integral the sort of walls of noise and chaos that Harrington occasionally provides can be into giving this record life, into giving it a lot of personality when those moments do come up, and for the most part he does take a pretty highly technical and improvisational role, but it's those few moments when he really does kick into the g distortion of his instrument that I, I would say he really manages to shine. Saxophonist Patrick Shiroishi also manages to deliver some pretty solid work with his own respective instrument, though I would say that the execution of his performances, despite obviously being improvisational in nature, do kind of feel a little bit less adventurous than I was initially expecting and hoping for, especially considering in some of his past solo efforts he's honestly gotten a huge amount of emotion out of his own performance work alone, let alone the work that he does with collaborators. Speak Moment's shortest track, Ship Rock, is the only song on the entire album where Shiroishi becomes totally unhinged in a way that would make Sam Rivers shed a tear of joy, but that's only four and a half roughly minutes of a 40-some minute long album, and that's not the majority of the album if you weren't aware. I don't mean to say that I don't think that Patrick Shiroishi is really exploring his limitations here, because I do think he is, legitimately. It's just that I feel like maybe he's not taking it quite as far as he possibly could, maybe not quite taking it to as ambitious of an extent as he possibly could, and uh, for what it's worth, I think his performance here is still solid. I just kind of wish that maybe it was a little more off the wall, maybe it was a little more off kilter, maybe it was a little more dissonant in nature despite being a pretty chaotic performance as is. He takes a slight sideman role despite being the only brass instrument in the lineup here, and uh, as a whole, he's fine. Lastly, Max Jaffe's role as a percussionist is strong, especially on the album closer, Return in 100 Years, The Colors Will Be at Their Peak. Yes, I did have to look down at a notepad to read that title in full. I just think that maybe his performance is kind of weighed down by production here to an extent. It was definitely an intentional creative choice, but a lot of his drum work here sounds like it's somewhat muffled compared to the rest of the performances from his two collaborators, sounding a little bit muddy, a little bit submerged water, if you will, and while I do 
think that that was legitimately intended, considering it's something that's active across the vast majority of the record, I don't necessarily think it worked out for the better. His performance work just feels less clear, less punchy than his associates here, and while I do think that in theory that could have led to an interesting parallel between the guitar work, saxophone work, and then the drum work, I don't necessarily think that's the result. It just feels a little bit odd hearing these types of drum tones on a record that feels much lighter and much airier than what is being provided there. Even through all of the flaws that do, generally speaking, haunt speak moment, I think that the record as a whole is a decent showcase for each third of the collaborators here's respective abilities behind their instrumentals, as well as how well they can come together as a trio, albeit a highly improvisational one. And while one could understandably ask more from each respective performer here, considering what they've done in the past and comparing some of their own better performances to this record right here, I think that Harrington, Jaffe, and Shiroishi, they all do some solid work here, and it's a very enjoyable record overall. And I do highly recommend it in particular if you find yourself particularly enamored with improvisational music or non-traditional jazz being put into an improvisational setting as the kind of distorted guitar work that you occasionally get here. Definitely, uh, it's not bebop, I'll say that. I'm going to give this record three stars out of five. And with that being said, that is the end of this quick album review. I've been Zane from the Infinite Jukebox. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.